Welcome to the Art of Money podcast with Art McPherson. And thanks for checking out the Art of Money podcast. My name is Mark Owens alongside Art McPherson and Luke McCarty. All the information for the McPherson Financial Group. You can find it at theartofmoneyradio.com. Gentlemen, let's get to it. Some analysts are still debating whether we are in a recession or not. But with the market trending up, gas, unemployment all coming down, it really doesn't feel like it. I want you to hear this clip from investment manager Kathy Wood. She tells Bloomberg. We believe we're in a recession. Two consecutive quarters of real GDP declines is the beginning of that definition. Three consecutive months of declines in leading indicators would suggest the same. I think our point of view is that this is going to be a severe inventory recession. And while most economists are saying, okay, the inverted yield curve points to a recession maybe next year, we believe we'll be coming out of it next year. All right, Art McPherson, Luke McCarty, help me out. Define inventory recession and how does that affect our bottom line? Well, basically, you know, through COVID, we've had all these supply chain interruptions, right? So we've got all kinds of things that have been going on with the inventory supply. And we see it at the grocery store. You see it all over the place. Well, as things have slowed down recently, we should start seeing things become a little more normalized. We've already seen gas prices drop quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a couple of things that Biden did that allowed more, opened the door to a few things too, and that's amazingly, right? Amazingly, (laughs) gas prices fell down. It's pretty good when you actually have a a policy that helps support, it will actually work. It Mm -hmm. works in the right direction. But we have the tax reform bill that was just passed. We have things like that. But recession, we are there technically from a standpoint of we've had two negative quarters. The economy is slowing down. Uh, That's part of why the gas prices are dropping. Uh, As people are carpooling together and we have less demand for fuel consumption, um, we're seeing the prices fall. So um, when things slow down and the economy is slowing. We went from a five and a half percent GDP last year where the economy was cooking on all cylinders, really going really well. And we've already slowed down to a 1.6 growth rate this year. So that's a, a big difference from where we were last year. Yeah, I agree with Kathy. And she's she's interesting because she manages, you know, some pretty high tech funds to the ETF side that had some really good run ups through COVID. And now it's getting, you know, beaten down pretty hard. Mm-hmm. The, the fund is ARK, A-R-K-K. You know, it's down about 50% this year. But, you know, in the world of those investments, she cannot change and go out of that box because people buy it for that reason. But for her to say, we think we're, you know, potentially going through a recession or we're in one now. I mean, nobody really knows where we are currently because what we see from an indicator perspective is usually lagging. It's mm-hmm. kind of behind. But what we see currently is corporate earnings are still good. Unemployment is still low. Now your housing market's starting to fall a little bit. Uh, New builds, you know, just with the interest rates being up, you know, retail sales is now positive again. It was negative for the last couple of months. Industrial production is still good. So in a big scheme, a big world of recession, we need to see corporate earnings drop and we need to see unemployment rise. We haven't seen that. So that's that's the positive right now. Where is the confidence level of the clients and the families that you serve in the community building retirement plans? Where's the confidence they have with their retirement and where they're at? People are very, very nervous and um, don't trust the market at all. What are you doing to help calm some of those fears? So just looking at the financial plan, you know, we like to make, you know, assumptions and predictions going forward and, you know, into the future of a lower projected growth rate, right? If you project something for 20 years at a high growth rate, of course it looks good on paper, but we like to bring those down a little bit, be more conservative for times like these that nobody expects, you know, just like the markets unexpected. So that way our clients can still see, hey, even though we're, you know, this is a bad year in the market, you're still okay, right? You can still take this income. You can still take that trip because we're on more of a conservative approach to, you know, the parameters of your financial plan. 772-281-5223. I reach out to the team of the McPherson Financial Group to begin that conversation, building that plan, or maybe you just need a second set of eyes. Nothing wrong with getting a second opinion from Art McPherson. And gentlemen, adults in their 40s and 50s who see their 401ks taking a hit during this shaky market, well, they aren't frantic yet because they have time on their side and a lot of them are still working. But if you're near retirement or you're already retired, it's a very different story. So if we've recently retired or we're close to it, what should we do in this bear market regarding our 401ks? It depends what you have available in your 401k, but typically you have more options outside of the 401k through an IRA, 
you know, or do a conversion to a Roth IRA. But, you know, what, what we're helping people in their 40s and 50s, you know, if we're going through, you know, something bad, you know, you just can't have all your eggs in one basket, right? You can't just own the S&P 500. You know, a little, little history lesson here. If you just own the S&P 500, you've done well the last several years, but you didn't make any money from 2000 to 2010. So you have to be diversified. You have to own different asset classes. You can't have all your money moving in the same direction. And this year in the stock market, we've seen that. We've seen stocks down. We've seen bonds down. And usually that's not the case. So if you had a typical, say, 60, 40 type of portfolio, your stocks were down, your bonds were down. You know, you may be sitting down, you know, 10 to 15 percent right now and something that usually doesn't do that. So you have to think outside the box, have different types of assets in your portfolio. It's all about being diversified. So one of the things we can do a lot of times here when people are retiring is we can really reposition their portfolios because they're no longer in the 401k. So they're not bound by the 401k rules, plan administration rules. They can actually roll those funds over um, to IRAs, Roth IRAs, things like that. And then once they're in those chassis, we can do all kinds of non-correlated type assets for them. So we can do things that are a little bit out of the box, not typically asset classes there. So when we go through volatile times like we are right now, they can have 30%, 40%, sometimes 50% of their portfolio not being affected by the market. And that's a real big comfort. Mm -hmm. So when you know that half of your portfolio is protected, that's a nice place to be compared to having all of it volatile with a market. 772-281-5223 or to moneyradio.com to reach out to the team at the McPherson Financial Group and begin that conversation. And you're talking about working on your portfolios. And Luke, in that first segment, we were talking to Coach Julie about the return of college football. It is officially back this weekend and did you see the story that the uh defending national champion georgia bulldogs are getting an upgrade to their stadium money is a good thing isn't it when you win <laughs> championships and you bring all that tv <laughs> revenue isn't it amazing how amazing. it translates to beautiful stadiums and things like that it's amazing what a banner will do they're getting new bathrooms wider concourses more concession stands regarding our retirement strategy as our income and our net worth grows much like how the income for the bulldogs has grown should we be making big upgrades to our portfolio to reflect like increased wealth you always want to make changes to your portfolio because what was working last year may not be working this year so you know during covid some of our strategies that worked really well for alternative strategies didn't work nearly as well this year so um, you want to make sure you make changes in that what you thought was going to work is going to still work in your current plan so as we go forward usually like luke said we're looking much longer term than just this year obviously but you want to make sure that what you thought would be a a strategy to help reduce risk or reduce volatility is doing what it's supposed to do. And if it's not, you know, we may, maybe we'll change gears a little bit because you will go through those times that are unique. Luke talked about this, you know, about a month ago where how often has it been that the bond market and the stock market went down the same percentage this time? And it was the first time we've ever experienced that. So you, you can have first time events and on those first time events, you want to make sure you're maximizing uh, that diversification Luke talked about earlier and making sure your assets are really really in good positions to be able to move forward mm -hmm. well, but also go through the current volatility well. You know, some typical upgrades you could have to your portfolio is just adding in those different asset classes I was talking about. You know, here, what we're doing with our clients now, I mean, we're, we're buying farmland, right? As the price of land goes up, the price of food goes up, farmland is a great inflationary hedge, right? We have another one of, you know, self-storage, right? Storage units. You know, we have some private real estate, you know, we use you know, value stocks, dividend players, we use option strategies. These are all different things that more than likely you cannot do in your 401k mm -hmm. because they're a little bit outside the box from a preferred stock standpoint. You know, we also offer, you know, annuities where you can't lose money. That's something Art was mentioning earlier. You know, if you have, you know, half your portfolio or a third of your portfolio that isn't down this year, that feels pretty good. It gives you some safety. It gives you that safety net. You know, we also have some other strategies that have kind of a buffer on them where, you know, the first 20 percent loss is covered. Right. So there's a lot of different strategies you can use. And that's something as you as your portfolio gets larger, as you get closer to retirement, you really need to consider 
because you don't want to be sitting in your traditional asset classes because the market's changing. What strategy is going to work best for you? We'll give Art McPherson a call. Let's begin that conversation. 772-281-5223. You brought it up, the Inflation Reduction Act. It includes $80 billion to expand the IRS Tax Enforcement Division. Art, Luke, I want you to hear this clip from Shark Tank investor Kevin O'Leary. He's not phased by any of this. Taxes is one of your greatest expense, not sometimes, all of the time. You've got to learn how to take every single deduction that's available to you. And these deductions change all the time. They change at a state level, they change at a federal level, and you're not keeping up with the code. And that's the whole point. You're missing out on opportunities. And Uncle Sam doesn't want what he doesn't deserve. He doesn't care about that. He just wants you to abide by the code. And you've got to find professionals that help you do exactly that. Talk to me about the first step in putting together a proper tax strategy. Well, that is really great advice. So what he said is exactly true. And typically, our average person walking into the door for the first time has never done that kind of planning. So they've never gone to an expert and said, hey, this is what my tax return was last year. This is where my income came from. I had this is a 1099. I had this is W-2. Um, you know, my wife has this. I have this. How could we save taxes next year? You know, can we do anything in our our planning and our preparation? That's why we have Mark Bernard here at McPherson Financial Group, who's a CPA. He's also a tax attorney. So the guy is a sharp man and he can help our clients develop ways of pulling income that are more tax efficient. We just had a, a meeting this morning um, in the office where we were talking about two specific clients that he says, I can get them tax free this year. So we can actually move them to a position by making a couple changes to their income withdrawals that we can actually have these clients go tax free. So it's having those kind of conversations with people to make sure that you know, you're maximizing what's available in the code. Yeah. So unlike Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank, <laughs> um, he says it's not intimidating, all the IRS agents, and it's just about knowing the tax code. I think it's a little bit of both. It's definitely intimidating if there if there's that many new IRS agents and that much more funding going towards IRS enforcement. Mm -hmm. Because if you overpay on your taxes, so if, if you're getting a refund, let's use round numbers, right? You're getting a refund of $10,000. That means you overpaid most every paycheck or throughout the year last year. Well, you don't get any interest on that. They don't pay you for holding your money. But the flip side, if you owe them $10,000 and you didn't pay in enough in taxes, they're going to charge you a penalty. So it's a very one-way street. And if you try to have a conversation with them now, you can't. Mm. So I, I think that part needs to be upgraded. The technology needs to be upgraded. But I think it is pretty intimidating because it's it's really a one way street and that their one way is getting larger and faster and more enforceable. But Luke, we can't get a hold of a customer service representative. Right, okay, Correct. so then everyone's saying like, oh, they're going to come after me. IRS are going to audit everyday Americans now. But the reality is, and we've talked about it before here on The Art of Money, that people are having to wait months and months up to a year to get a tax refund back. The IRS, they're so backlogged right now. Aren't they just trying to get a little more efficient with getting this paperwork done by hiring all these new agents? Unfortunately, it doesn't usually work that way. <laughs> Is that my, am, yeah. I, am I trying I mean, you to be would, too glass half full? I think you are. I mean, unfortunately, you would think, yes, common sense should say, let's put the money where it needs to go. Um, you know, we're short on customer service. We're short here. We're short here. But it, that's not a revenue generator. So yeah. typically the new jobs go to those positions that generate revenue. Well, what's going to generate revenue? Getting more tax people, you know, getting more audits done where people are paying a higher tax and getting that kind of revenue come in the door. That's why everybody's making the assumption these new jobs are going to be out there to enforce. And the fact that they said the first time they offered the job that you should be willing to shoot somebody what? and be able to I enforce, that. that is a pretty good sign that it's not customer service job. I take back my original thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, says, it said something about, you know, being the ability to use force when needed and, you know, firearm training and or something like that. And it's like, and you would not be offended by, by using a firearm. And I was like, what? Oh. Well, Can you just send me a letter in the mail, please? Don't come to my door. <laughs> We're all going to find out sooner than later that, you know, there's only so many billionaires you can audit. Yeah. And they all have a team around them to make sure what they're doing is kosher. And then there's, they're going to go to the millionaires next. But when they run out of those, then it's going to come to the middle class who don't have, you know, the CPAs on their team, mm -hmm. you, you know, sometimes and don't have the tax attorneys and 
you know, don't have the ability to have all this great up to date advice. So they get audited, they get scared, they see the letter, you know, they send the check in. And so I think that's where it's going to trickle down, you know, similar to the tax vehicle credit. I mean, it seems like what the government does, you know, a lot of times it sounds good on paper, but it never comes to fruition. Thanks for listening. Want more from Art McPherson of McPherson Financial Group? Find us online at artofmoneyradio.com. We are an independent financial services firm helping individuals create retirement strategies using a variety of financial and insurance products to custom suit their needs and objectives. Securities offered through World Equity Group, Inc., member FINRA and SIPC, a registered investment advisor. Investment advisory services offered through ProStatus Group, LLC. McPherson Financial Group and ProStatus Group, LLC are separate entities and are not owned or controlled by World Equity Group, Inc. Exposure to ideas and financial vehicles discussed should not be considered investment advice or recommendation to buy or sell any financial vehicle. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Investments can fluctuate and when redeemed may be worth more or less than when originally invested. Investment financial professionals are not licensed in all 50 states. Art McPherson is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency and does not provide legal or tax advice. Please consult with your attorney, accountant, and or tax advisor for advice concerning your particular circumstances. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through Arthur McPherson. Florida Insurance License Number A1 Today's show has been a work of art.